Hello everyone, welcome to this webinar brought to you by Brusa Malaysia and managed by our company Life Champ. Today's uh, our webinar title is Alternative Tools to Trade in the Both Bull and the Bear Market. So welcome everybody. So my name is Shen Chu, I'm the moderator for this uh, session. So in this session, we are going to look into what are these alternative tools such as exchange trader funds, and also leverage and inverse exchange trader funds, okay? ETF versus L&I ETF. How are we going to use these two tools to profit, uh, to profit from both the bull market and also the bear market? Disclaimer, whatever we're gonna share in this uh, session is only for educational purpose. So in no way that we give you any recommendation for you to buy or sell any listed securities should we mention here. So if you decide to make any investment decisions, you are 100% responsible for all your investment risks. All right, I'm going to introduce our speaker uh, for this session. And uh, he is none other than Mr. Debo Chua. So Debo graduated with a bachelor degrees in finance and investment. Uh, he's passionate in investment banking and has completed the CFA level three exam. So he has worked as a relationship manager for a bank and he has over five years of investment experience with a focus on trading Malaysians and US stocks, commodities and index futures, applying both the fundamental and technical analysis. So he has uh, one year of teaching experience that trained over 500 students and he's also an expert in wealth management and financial planning. So without further ado, uh, may I call upon Mr. Debo Chua, all right, come to our session. Hi. Hello, Shane. Thank you for the uh, introductions. Uh, yeah. yeah, thanks glad, for joining us today. Glad to be back here as well. All right, uh, so let me share my screen, okay. Okay, I think everyone we can see my screen. Yes, perfect. Okay. All right, so all right, let's not waste any minutes. Let's just get started, all right, for this today's section. Okay, we, today's section, we'll talk about um, exchange traded fund. Okay, uh, exchange traded fund, honestly speaking, it's a very interesting um, investment vehicles. Okay, to be honest, uh, I have the view that uh, this investment vehicles is all, it's honestly one of the best uh, invention in our finance industry, and uh, it can help a lot of people um, with or without you know uh, much of this uh, financial expertise or exposure okay because it is a very good thing very easy way to start on your investment okay and it's also very easy for you to just uh, manage it okay manage it well okay we'll talk about um you know when we uh, want to invest okay it's always like you just want to manage well with your risk management and all this stuff okay so We'll go through the learning outcomes first. Okay, so the first thing first we'll talk about is um, what is the exchange trader fund ETF? Okay, I'll explain in depth about this exchange trader fund ETF and I'll tell you guys um, what does it work? You know, how does it work and how, how it helps you? Okay, if it compares to like a normal stocks, you know, it can have even a better uh, leverage and competitive. Uh, compared to the normal individual stocks, okay? And then the second thing we'll talk about is what's the difference between ETF and mutual funds, okay? A lot of people got a lot of confusion between these two, okay? They they have a lot of comments uh, uh, together, uh, but they do have their own distinctive um, differences, okay? Uh, that's what we call, okay? And then the third one, we'll talk about the types of ETF, okay? There can be a lot of ton types, Okay, can be even up to date like you know crypto ETF. It can be this kind of way as well. Okay, so ETF is uh, ever changing tools. Okay, that we can invest. Okay, and then uh the fourth one we will go through the difference between leverage ETF and inverse ETF. Okay, this is the main part. Okay, this is the main part. How can we play around it? And then the fifth one we talk about why choose ETF. Okay, why choose leverage and inverse ETF? Okay. It can be a very good short-term trading tool okay, for our investment portfolio. And then, of course, we'll follow by how do we trade in a different market condition. So we'll talk about um, hypothesis uh, scenario. So let's say uh, when, when it comes to a bad market or when it comes to a good market, how can we trade it? 
um, in, when, when you play around for these things and how what, what what's the timeline that you should actually set when you are trading about this leverage and inverse ETF okay and then the last one we'll talk about the things to take note while trading on this LNI ETF okay there are a lot of traps as well so you gotta be sure that you know about all these traps okay because they they can give you a hard time if you are holding it for too long for example okay so these are the, like for example some of the traps okay so the first thing first is what is exchange trader fund okay so if you guys pay attention to uh, what Warren Buffett always talk about the markets okay he always mentioned this um, quotes okay to say that the best thing to do for the market is to just always buy 90% in the S&P 500 index fund Okay, meaning to say, for you guys, if you really want to just invest, okay, you can don't you don't have to do anything about it. Okay, you can just buy an S and P five hundred index fund. Just go on and following the index, and you will not have to worry about anything, you know, about about the investment, um, um, um like risk or management and all this stuff. Okay, because from what he quotes about this this thing, this statement, what he meant about it is. The S and P five hundred index fund, okay, it's it's a very interesting, okay, because ETF, honestly speaking, what is ETF? It is an index tra tracking investment products that gives the investor exposure to a pool of securities, okay. What you can see, I highlight the word pool of securities, meaning to say a diversified investment, but the key part of this statement is the first two three words, okay, meaning to say index tracking investment products okay meaning to say just like warren buffett said um etf if you buy into an s p 500 etf that's, that means you are just buying an investment product that actually tracking the same return as the s p 500 okay so again repeat that huh? so if you're buying into s p 500 exchange trader fund etf what the investment product does is basically just tracking the performance of S&P 500, okay? Tracking the performance of S&P 500, okay? Whatever S&P 500 have, your ETF will have, okay? So that is what that is what it means like buying index tracking ETF, okay? So if you think about it um, deeply, okay? When we talk about like buying an S and P five hundred, or maybe we talk, we we think about, uh, we think back about uh Warren Buffett's statements about like why you should just put up ninety percent of your uh, portfolio into just S and P five hundred if you don't want to do anything. Okay, the reason behind it is um when we talk about like investing into companies or maybe like a shares or anything like that, you have to make a lot of homework. Okay, you have to make a lot of studies. You have to um go on and you know tracking about their um technical analysis, okay, fundamental analysis, and a lot of stuff. Okay, maybe like even profit margin, gross profit margin, everything. Okay, so that is what you call like micro investing. Okay, micro investing meaning to say you are go down into the micro, you go to individual companies, and you go and make decision on each of the uh, what we call indicators that actually support your buying decision okay um but if you're buying an etf or what we call like literally you're buying an s p 500 to be honest the companies that can actually be listed up into the s p 500 are the companies that actually have some qualities they, they can be like very very good blue chip stocks okay uh, be it like you know, uh, Walmart or you know even the Bank of America and all this stuff. Okay, they have a very good fundamental. Okay, that is actually verified and proved uh, by the market itself. Okay, so that is why they are included in the S and P five hundred index. Okay, so that's the meaning. Meaning to say, if you're buying just the S and P five hundred, to be honest. The homework that actually you needed to do for investing, like goes down into individual company and all this small little stuff, 
basically you just don't have to do it anymore because the s p 500 the one that maintaining the index they will really help you to do the job okay they will be the one that have you help you to do the job okay so that is why uh, actually i i believe that this this statement is very very powerful you okay, need to say the best thing to buy okay if you are unsure about the markets you don't have to worry just look at the s p 500 is it at the high side or at the low side like for example for the past few months okay it is definitely at the low side because s p 500 had been coming down for like what 30 percent at least okay at least 30 percent so it's kind of like a no-brainer to just buy into s p 500 because it's actually at the low side already and if you just buy an s p 500 you don't have to do anything if it comes down more try to just average down then you don't have to worry about anything about like changing the company wanting to change the bad company to good company no you don't have to do that because the s p 500 it will adjust themselves okay so that is why i would like to emphasize about this statement like the best thing to do is just to buy 90 percent into an s p 500 okay this is what we call like passive investing okay you don't do anything if you're talking about you just want to get dividend might as well just do so okay go into s p 500 buy the index okay so if we go deep like the definition of ratings right so the purpose of ETF, as you can see here, the purpose is just to replicate the returns of a particular index, okay, before the fees and expenses, okay, before the fees and expenses, okay. So meaning to say you do have to give up some of this, uh, I would say, uh, returns, a little bit of it, you know, uh, just for the guys that actually comes up with this product. I mean, why not, right? Because it's the best, invention in finance industry almost like credit cards so you know um you you, you should really appreciate give the fees and expenses you should really appreciate okay so the purpose of this etf is just to replicate the returns and for them you're already uh, earning a good return in a long-term period of time okay and then we'll go deep into like what's the difference between etf and the mutual fund okay so etf and mutual fund as this picture shows right so the left side is mutual fund and the right side is etf okay if you go deep into each particular you can see that let's say for example starting from mutual fund it starts from a pool of investors okay actually pull in their money for example hundreds uh, of the investors they put it uh, each of them put up a thousand, so hundred thousand there in, in the pool of money. And then they will get a fund manager, a guy who is actually expert in investing. Okay. And then they, the fund manager will somehow manage the pool of money into securities. Okay. So it generates the returns, pass on to the investors. Okay. So typical mutual funds, like uh, what we call unit trust, you know. Uh, as I think Malaysians, uh, you always heard about this, are public mutuals, you know, they, they are the one like literally selling mutual funds and all this stuff. So this is the, I mean, common SOP, okay, to set up a mutual fund, okay. Uh, and then and then at the right side of this uh, exchange trader fund, okay, uh, the picture is a bit, I would say it's a bit, um, uh, uh, not to say like very clear, okay, not to say like very clear, okay, but the typical idea, is basically they will each, they will exchange the S and P five hundred with your funds. Okay, they will exchange the S and P five hundred with your funds, and then they will just replicate the S and P five hundred performance, and then pass it back to you. So you are getting back the same return as well. So typically the same idea as you can see, like literally the same idea as mutual fund. Okay, so that is why a lot of people are quite um confused about these two products because uh, one is mutual fund, one is ETF, both of them are div diversified as well. They, they invest into a, 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 a big number of securities, you know? So what is the key difference, okay, between these two products, okay? So if I would like to break it down directly, right? Okay, the key difference between the two is that the first thing first is ETF, you can actually trade it actively during the day. Okay. 
you can actually trade it actively during the day. Okay. But for mutual fund, cannot. Okay. How say so? So let me explain uh, some of the scenarios we want. It's like if you want to buy ETF, right, in Malaysian markets, you can literally just go into your CDS account and then just search for the right ETF product. Okay. So you just go into your CDS account, be it like Rakuten or maybe like Affin or Maybank or anything of it, any brokers will do. Just go into the platform, search for the ETF, the right ETF uh, code or name of it. And then literally you can just buy and sell. Okay. So from there, you're able to know, you know, uh, like for example, you can just trade on it. You want to buy? The next hour you want to sell? You can do so. Okay. You don't have to drag anything. Okay. So that is how ETF is traded okay, in our CDS account. Okay. Uh, but mutual fund is different because mutual fund, you're buying from the fund manager. Okay. You're buying from the fund manager. Okay. So if you want to go to this mutual fund products, you have to go to their resp uh, res uh, respective um, uh, agent. Okay. Or, or like, for example, if you want to go for fund supermarket, you can go to fund supermarket. But typically, you cannot trade it. Like if you buy today, you can't straight away next hour you want to sell. Like if you saw some of the news saying like there's a war coming or anything like that, you can't trade so. So you're already at the buying at the high side, you just got to bear the losses. So that is uh, the key difference between ETF and mutual fund. Okay. And then the other key difference between these two products is that it's, it's, it's quite contrasting as well, okay, being to say this, okay, because ETF, the product that can actually be traded during the day is considered as a passive investment. Okay, I repeat, huh? the product that can actually be traded actively during the day is actually considered as a passive investment. Okay, so that is ETF, okay, because the idea is that the way ETF works is just to replicate the performance of an index. Okay. They have nothing to do with, you know, like changing the, 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 the constitute of the index. Like they, they see this uh, company, they don't think that this company is in S&P 500, they change it. No, they can't do so. They can just replicate whatever it is presented by the S and P five hundred. So that is what we call like ETF is a passive investment. Okay, uh, but mutual fund is actually an active investment. Okay, why say so? Because uh, the decision making of the investment is actually made by the fund manager, depending on the market itself. Okay, I repeat that. Uh, the decision of making the investment decision. It's actually depending on the fund manager itself, his perspective to look at the markets and think of the best solution for their pool of money. Okay, so typically speaking, mutual fund is actually an active investment because the fund manager actually actively managing it. Okay, so that is what we call like mutual fund. Okay, so if you want to say what is these two differences will lead to it can lead to a lot of things okay, i can tell you like for example in terms of fee wise definitely mutual fund will be higher because you gotta hire someone you know to actively manage uh, and if this fund manager somehow it performs very well okay he performs very well you gotta give him some bonus okay maybe like 10 uh, uh, a few percent of his uh, returns so you gotta give it to him as a bonus Okay, uh, whereby for this ETF, you don't have to do anything to do with it. Okay, no, you just replicate the index. So definitely your fee wise will definitely be lower uh, as compared to the mutual fund. Okay, so just to let all of this uh, um, audience here to understand, if you guys like literally when you guys like engage with a lot of uh, what we call this agent, sales agent, unit trust agent or all those things. Okay. Uh, you, you, you should really consider about what kind of investment you're investing, okay? What kind of investment you're buying? Are you just trying to grow together with the markets, okay? If, if, it's, if it's this way, then 
you shouldn't just buy any unit trust. You just go for ETF. That will be the easiest way to start your investment. Okay, so start your investment. Even even like you you don't really have like very in depth expertise in this uh, industry. Okay, so uh, uh, but if let's say for example you are trying to look at for uh, a higher return, like active return, you want to look at like who is the best fund manager in this Malaysia markets, and then who is actually the best technology funds in this market, uh, then you should then engage with your uh, unit trust agent, okay? And then from them, they were able to introduce you what kind of fund is actually performing well in this Malaysia, okay? So that is the part four, difference between ETF and mutual fund, okay? So now let's go into like, what are the types of ETF? Okay, what are the types of ETF? Okay, as you can see here, there are a lot of types here, like literally like all kinds of investments, okay? These are all kinds of investments because uh, ETF, if you can look into it plainly, right? It's literally just an alternative investment to somehow allows you to uh, get into a lot of different kinds of exposure. So it's literally an alternative of investment that invests into the same thing like stocks, uh, currency or uh, commodities or a lot of this different stuff. Okay, so if you like to break it down, okay, we, we, we can have a lot of different types like stock index ETF. Okay, so uh, a lot of this, if you look at like the, uh, you know, MSCI, okay, they, 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 have, a lot, they have a lot of this uh, world index. Okay, so if you are talking about the ETF that actually tracks the MSCI world index, so typically that is stock index for the global you know, uh, region, okay? And, and definitely we have geographical uh, ETF, like Malaysia is what we call like KLCI. So Malaysia index is what we call KLCI, only 30 companies, okay? Uh, so in terms of uh, the US one, it's called like S&P 500, okay, NASDAQ, Dow Jones, and all this. Okay, S&P 500 is the best one, okay, S&P 500, okay? And then definitely we have this, the main uh, things about this uh, today's sections, uh, leverage ETF and in inverse ETF. Okay, these two are the special one. Okay, these two are the special one because if you really compare about it, these five products, uh, you can literally put it into passive investment to put it for long terms. Okay, like we are talking about literally three years, five years, something like that. Uh, but I would say for these two, it's a total different idea. Okay, it's only for a short term period. Okay, so later I'll explain to you guys why it's only for a short-term period, okay? And then definitely we have like a lot of currency ETF, you know, we're following the dollar index, you know, those are the very interesting things as well. Like if you are buying it uh, at the beginning of this year, so you're earning quite well because uh, US dollar has been going up uh, pretty high, okay? Uh, sector ETF, industry ETF, and definitely we have commodity ETF, okay? So without further ado, let's go into today's topics about this uh, leverage ETF. Okay, leverage ETF. So uh, as the words presented, you know, leverage, that means you are taking more debts to buying uh, more ETF. Okay, so typically you can get the idea uh, straight away. You need to say leverage ETF. It somehow gives you the idea of using leverage to amplify the returns. Okay, for your for your ETF returns. Okay. So if you want to go detail about this leverage ETF, right? So the how how it works, it will be like uh, you are borrow from the institution. Okay, you are borrow uh, a, 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 a particular um, amount. Okay, and then you invest into ETF. Okay, uh, meaning to say, for example, the ETF world uh, in the ETF world is typically like you are buying. Uh, you're paying for the same ETF amount for like, for example, let's say one ringgit, uh, but uh, for that particular product, you will actually get three times, okay, three times, like for example, three times, two times, or whatever, okay, three times the 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 the, the index performance. So, uh, for example, the the index, let's say S&P 500 goes up by two percent, so you will goes up to like six percent, okay. So, uh, that that is what we call like leverage ETF. Okay? You're paying for the same capital, but actually you are getting more returns from it, okay? 
So uh, for this leverage ETF, definitely it's the, the best thing about it is like low capital upfront, okay, buying at a full amount and you're enjoying a high returns, okay, from it, okay. Uh, but for this leverage ETF, okay, I, I would say the, 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 the things to check out about this leverage ETF is that it always comes with a cost, okay, it will always comes with a cost if you go into the leverage uh, component, okay. So the cost is that uh, it, it should have this uh, interest cost, okay, about this uh, leverage ETF. And sometimes um, it can be um, very bad as well, okay, if, if, if the interest goes high and it can hurt uh, your returns, okay. But I would say compared to the normal margin account and all this stuff, it won't be that, that high, okay, compared to uh, the leverage ETF. Okay, so this is like an example of the leverage ETF. Okay, an example of leverage ETF. Uh, this is uh, ETF for this NASDAQ 100. Okay, it's what we call QQQ. Okay, Invesco QQQ. So you guys can just uh, go on and search about it. Okay, it's a very interesting product. And um, for the past one week, it, it has goes up a lot. Okay, it, it goes up a lot. Like as you can see, the NASDAQ has been going up like from around I think 11,000 goes up to like 12,000 I believe today perhaps they can break through it um, you know uh, 13,000 as well so from there um, earning like for example a 10% this leverage uh, let's say it's like two times three times already gives you like 20% to 30% it's so, okay so um, this Invesco QQQ is a very interesting product okay very very interesting product you can just go on and buy it whenever there is a good market, you know, like bull market, recovering markets, something like that. Okay. Uh, but as you can see, like if you track back dates, so I was taking uh 26th of uh, Je uh, Ju July. Okay. That time was still near to uh the Federal Reserve meeting. Okay. So the market back then was like uncertainty is still there. So the market was going down. But I remember it wasn't going down that much, but this because it's a leverage ETF, so as you can see, it's like going down like 1.66%. Uh, for, for an index, it's quite serious thing because uh, for an index to go down like 1% or 2%, it's quite a serious thing because index, as you know, like this is NASDAQ 100, there, there's having like a lot of companies inside. If this index can go up to like 2%, it's a quite a crazy thing. I mean to say the market is crazy. Okay, but because this is a leverage ETF, so that's why it goes down a little bit more. Okay. <clears throat> so I would say leverage ETF is quite straightforward, right? Okay. So now we are just moving into inverse ETF. Okay, inverse ETF. So inverse ETF. Um, what does inverse ETF means? Okay. So as the word present itself as well, inverse, meaning to say the effect of the performance is actually reverse okay the performance is actually reverse okay so meaning to say it is the, the purpose of this inverse uh, inverse etf is actually to deliver the returns on declining index okay declining index okay meaning to say bear markets okay so if you know about this inverse etf to be honest for the past six months it won't be that difficult because you know that market is very bad. So whenever you know that market is bad, just try to trade on this inverse ETF. At the very least, you're able to get some returns from it. Hedge on your products. Okay, hedge on your portfolio. Okay, so this is what we call ET inverse ETF. Okay. We go into detail. Okay, inverse ETF. Uh, it is called short ETF as well. Or what we call like bear ETF. Okay. Uh, the, the plane as up plain explanation about this is like you can gain whenever the market is declining okay you can gain whenever the market is declining okay so to be honest this is a very good product as well because um like for example if you are talking about like let's say a fund manager whenever you have uh like perhaps like 70 percent or 80 percent of capital already invested in the market okay but you you gotta always keep on some cash to prepare about this um, bear market, okay? So when the bar, bear market comes, okay, uh, instead of just leaving your portfolio at risk and, you know, bear the losses, okay, what you can do is just actually take out your remaining cash and just trade on, 
this what we call inverse ETF. Okay, so from there, you know that the market is bad. So you just go on and trading this inverse ETF. The market keeps on declining, but at the very least, you are getting a certain returns for you know, like a like a like a protection for your for your whole portfolio. So you are not losing that much. Okay. So if you don't know how to do this, um, you know, your, your peers maybe they are they are losing like um 20 to 30 percent, but somehow because you are trading on this inverse ETF, you're able to hedge on your pro your, your portfolio and at the end of the day, you, your return is like maybe perhaps negative 10%, 10% losses. So that is a very good thing because you, you're winning ahead uh, a lot of your competitors or peers. Okay, so inverse ETF, it's a very good product for you guys to learn about hedging the market. Okay, so uh, to be honest, I've been trading for this e uh, inverse ETF, you know, for, for the past six months. Uh, the market was bad, you know, I just, I just take a small, small capital of my portfolio. You know, I just I just try to like hitch on the market and, and, and get a little bit of the returns. So uh, that is a very good way, okay? So in, in order to make your uh, risk management what we call, okay? Okay, but then this is this is a, 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 a very interesting things about this inverse ETF is that um, if you're talking about ETF, right? Okay, um, in Malaysia, uh, uh, in Malaysia, we do have other uh, ETF as well. Okay, we do have. Uh, you can you can literally, as I said, you can literally buy ETF uh, in Malaysia market and everything. Uh, but I'm not sure about Malaysia because most of the time I trade ETF in the uh, US. That that is more liquid and allows me to trade on easily. Uh, so typically, US uh, markets, you can actually short sell your ETF as well. Okay, you can actually short sell your ETF as well. Okay. Uh, meaning to say, um, I'm not sure whether you guys know about short selling, uh, the mechanism of short selling. Meaning to say, you actually, instead of buying the stocks or buying the products, you can actually just sell it at the current price first. Okay. And then afterwards, when the price comes down, you can buy it at a lower price to return the, the stocks to the brokers and, or, or anything like that. Okay. So, Typically saying uh, for, for, for ETF, uh, you, you don't you just have to do it with normal ETF, you're able to do short selling. Okay. So it's literally the same effect as this in inverse ETF as well. Okay. Uh, but what's the difference between inverse ETF and short selling ETF? Okay. Uh, there's a three key differences. Okay. The first one is that if you want to short sell something, you gotta have a margin account. Okay, you gotta have a margin account. So, meaning to say, um, you 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 have to go through a lot of uh, typical process to to able to open a margin account. Then only if they will allows you to short sell anything like that. Uh, but for inverse ETF, you don't have to do so because typically you are just buying the the inverse ETF. Okay, the the, the product is just there. You just buy the inverse ETF. They will give you the the opposite direction, the money direction for the performance. Okay. And then uh, for short selling, dividend wise, you are responsible for the dividend as well, okay? Because the mechanism is that you are selling it right now, okay, at this current price, and then return the securities, the, the, the stocks, okay, to, to, to the brokers later on uh, when the price is coming down. But during that period, if let's say the, 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 the stock price or anything like that, they do have uh, dividend, so you gotta be responsible for the dividend as well because you have to pay them the dividend. Okay, so that is uh, sh the short selling mechanism. Uh, but for ETF, uh, invest ETF, no, you don't have to do so because you're not responsible for anything of this. Just buy the, you, the, the, the inverse ETF, they just give you the opposite direction of the performance. Uh, and then the last thing, last, uh, this is also very interesting, is what we call the short interest. Okay, short interest. Okay, uh, if you are going through the short selling process, uh, they, they will have this interest, okay, they will definitely have this interest, uh, they will charge on you, okay, just like a normal margin account, they will charge you on the interest as well, and uh, short selling, if this interest goes really bad, like what happened, I remember back then in 2020-21, uh, there's this very famous uh, stocks, US stocks called GameStop, okay, uh, so the GameStop uh, share price, it goes up like crazy, Okay, within within a few few weeks times, and then you know the 
global investor groups like pay attention to it. Okay, the main idea is because the short interest got up so high is that almost over 100% of the shareholders, like literally, there. so there's only 100 stocks there, but the short interest goes up like crazy high and there literally no one's buying. So the buyers of the uh, stocks literally just uh, don't want to sell anything to this short seller. And then this short seller, they have no choice at all but to offer a higher price and a higher price and the price just keeps on going up and up and up to attract more seller market. But back then, the GameStop you know, all this community, they, 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 were, they were very, very, you know, uh, you can say cooperative, like literally they all just heart to heart, all of them, they just hold on to GameStop uh, shares. So because of that, GameStop shares goes up like crazy high. Uh, so that is the risk for short selling, uh, you know, anything. Okay. Uh, but for inverse ETF, it's a totally different idea. Okay, you are buying, you're not short selling. They don't have this short interest at all. Okay. So typically saying that, that means you don't have to worry about this, this, this particular risk. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so for inverse ETF, uh, we have this uh, example pro share shots. S&P 500 ETF. Okay, this is one of these uh, invest in inverse ETF. Okay, for S&P 500. Okay, so as you can see, uh, the same date, 26th of July. Uh, just now I showed the leverage ETF was going down like crazy, one percent something. Uh, but this inverse ETF that day itself, uh, it's doing quite well. You know, one percent, one point one five percent. You are getting at least something. You know, uh, for this inverse ETF. Okay. And then definitely we have a lot of Malaysia's leverage or uh, inverse ETF. Okay, uh, to be honest, um, these 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 products, uh, I I'm not really familiar about these products because uh, I, um, if I want to talk about ETF, uh, most of them are just trend on, um, you know, the the global one. Um, I use a, deep, uh, a simple platform uh, to do so. Okay, uh, but if you want to go for leverage in that. Leverage and inverse ETF in Malaysia. Okay, there are lots like uh, this trip plus. Uh, you can go on this is a leverage ETF. Okay, this is actually uh, tracking on this uh, Fang index. Okay, uh, okay, and all this are uh, inverse ETF, and this is what we call it. also the same thing leverage ETF. Hang Seng, China. They are tracking the China's uh, indexes. Okay, so uh, these are the names that you can literally just go into your CTS account and then just search for it and then. You'll find the products okay so this is your uh, pricing as well so as, as, I, as, I, as I put it on here okay okay now we'll go into like why do we choose for leverage or maybe like inverse ETF okay so if we really um specific out uh, why should really you why, why you should really trade on this uh products uh to be honest it's just about like risk management and um, the way to actually just uh, uh, amplify your returns, you know, you know like, like the topic man, you know, alternative uh, investment to actually enhance your returns. Uh, the main reason is just basically this too, okay, to actually have better risk management and also to amplify your returns, okay, uh, using this to leverage and invest again, okay, because the main thing about it is like you can gain profits in either bull or bear market, any direction, you know. Uh, in Malaysia, we, we, we don't really have this short selling mechanism to everyone, okay, only for uh, institutionals, okay. And so that is why like uh, for uh, retail investors like us, we, we don't have this mechanism. So it's best for you to just have this ETF and you're able to do so in bear markets, okay. And then uh, you're also able to enjoy leverage without being provided like any margin, you know, Margin is a very difficult uh, 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 facilities to get. You know, you, you're gonna have a lot of uh, promising uh, profile, you know, to, to prove it to your broker. Uh, so it's a very difficult product to get, okay? So uh, you're able to enjoy this leverage thing, okay? And, 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 and able to enhance your wealth even faster, you know? And, and then, uh, also, also that, that that means like less capital at risk. You know, if you, if you put up like a hundred for ETF, then that's basically just that. So you know your leverage, uh, leverage return at the same time you're having a 
sufficient risk management as well. Okay, and this is the best one that I that I that I think you should really learn about trading and inverse ETF is that you're able to hedge uh, during a bear market. Okay, All right, like for the past six months, just go on and get any capital you have, like put it into an inverse ETF. You're able to do so. You're able to at least earn twenty to thirty percent returns. And from there, you're able to you know offset the losses that you have in your portfolio. Okay, so that is the best thing you should trade on inverse ETF. Okay. And then how do we trade in different markets condition? Okay. Uh, okay. For this, I believe every one of you all like, really know about the direction thing. As in, if there is a blue market, just go on and buy a leverage ETF. Okay. It's quite simple, right? So straightforward, easy. And if a bear market, red sign, it's buy on the inverse ETF. Okay. I believe all of y'all like really understand about the directions. Okay, meaning to say bull market, just go and buy the, the good one, the good one that they're going up, the average ETF. Uh, bear market, just buy on the one that is bad, inverse ETF, the money. Okay. Uh, this too is typically the direction view. Okay. But there is a specific condition that you actually like when it comes, when when it, it fulfills this condition, then only you go go and trade on this uh, leverage or inverse ETF, it will be the best thing, okay? Your, your, your probability of success trading will then be higher, okay? The, the condition is first thing first, you gotta have high volatility periods, okay? You gotta, high, you gotta have high volatility periods, okay? Meaning to say, you have to get a big movement in the market, okay? Big movement in the market, okay? As, as what we call, um, like for example, if we say for the last one week time, there has been a good market movement in the market, right? Uh, you know, US market has been going strong, everyone is happy, and they're, they're, always, they're, they're like having good returns and all this stuff. Uh, but the thing about it is, the volatility was just started back then, like last week, ever since Federal Reserve announced their uh, MPC meeting, okay? Uh, and, 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 um, once they announce it, you know, then the market will react positively about that decision. And at the end of the day, you know, as you can see, uh, like last Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, there has been like high volatility period. Okay. So at this point of time, you know that the volatility is there. So then you should put on to leverage ETF. Okay. Put on to leverage ETF. Okay. Um, but as you can see, like literally after last week times, when it comes to this week, like Monday, Tuesday, now it comes to like right now, uh, what US stock is trading at the moment, the volatility actually slowed down. Okay, the volatility actually slowed down. Meaning to say it got more stable. Okay, it's, it is consolidating. So that is the period that you should actually just sell off the ETF or what we call like TP, uh, uh, take profit. To get out of the market okay so uh, that is how we play on the condition okay uh, but I will, I, will, I, will, I will go deeper into this volatility it's like if you want to trade on this leverage etf you should actually buy right before the volatility comes you know, buy right before the volatility comes okay meaning to say like for example you know that the federal reserve is going to announce something Okay, if you have a view, a strong direction view that the, the market is going to act, uh, act positively, you have the expectation on it, you know that uh, this is going to be a strong direction view, uh, then that is the exact moment you should just buy in the ETF. Okay, uh, not, not like literally once the Federal Reserve announce it, then only you do go and chase high. And then, and then you buy at the high price, you buy at the high side. Uh, I would say if you buy at the high side, that would be slightly risky trading and you should have even smaller time frame okay when 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 you want to sell off the ETF okay and 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 this thing is even more uh significant this effect is even more significant when you're trading for inverse ETF okay inverse ETF okay why say so it's because you gotta understand one thing about the market is if you are buying ETF, let's say you are 
you, you have both in, 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 in the finance term, it's what we call, if you have a long direction view for the markets, meaning to say you are actually expecting the market to go up, uh, you can just buy, okay, just buy. That, that, that's the that's easiest way to say that, okay? And when you look at, look at it plainly, right? The upside of buying ETF, normal ETF, the upside of looking at the market going strong, the upside of it is limited. Uh, no, the upside of it is unlimited. Okay, it can it can be sky high. Okay, the price can go up to crazily high. Even the analysts or the economists cannot explain about the valuation or anything like that. It can do so. It can do so. It doesn't have any barriers, you know, to go up as high as possible as long as the market just likes it. Okay, and then the downside of if you are buying anything, right? It's limited because. Like for example, if you're buying a share, the price is actually five ringgit. So the downside of it is five ringgit goes down to everything. Zero. You buy one stock, okay? You buy one stock. So that is the down limited downside. Okay. Uh, but for inverse ETF, right? In finance terms, so we call it, you are shorting the market. You have a short direction view. Okay. Meaning to say you believe that the market will go down. Okay. So if you look at that way, right, the market goes down, then only you earn. But your upside is actually very limited. Meaning to say, like, if you short the five ringgit stocks, your upside is just five ringgit. Once the stock goes to zero, you only earn for five ringgit. And that is the limited gain you can get. Okay. But the, the downside of it, let's say the, the five ringgit stock is so crazily high, you know, because of liquidity issue or anything about it, you know, market can be very crazy about it. And your, your, your downside can be huge. Your downside can be freaking huge. Okay, it can go up like 10, 12, 15, 20. So you're losing like a big chunk of the uh, 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 losses there. Okay, so for inverse ETF, I would say inverse ETF, you gotta have even higher volatility period. Okay, you gotta have like, for example, if you, you see the interest rate is going higher and then you think that the the market cannot be any higher anymore, it's going to go down. So that is the moment you should really start buying university. Okay, and then from there, you know that as you can see, the, the market goes down uh, really, really bad and then you're able to earn a lot. Okay, so uh, for university, it's, it's, it's even more, I would say it's even more sensitive okay, about this condition. Uh, uh, that you need, okay. Uh, but of course, if you want to, because a lot of time we, we can say like things goes up easy to say, right? Because uh, good thing always we we always um imagine good things better, okay. We we don't we don't really imagine bad things like that well because we we don't we don't really know like I mean don't we say not to say we don't we really know like we don't really care much about bad thing because. Uh, we always want to just avoid it, so that's why we, we we try to not think about it most of the time. Okay, but that that is that is like most of the people um they they can't really react on it. So if you can't react on inverse ETF, okay, what you should what, what you can get is actually um trade on like a leverage inverse ETF. Okay, it can be a way as well, but you gotta remember is that buying a leverage inverse ETF that means you're taking a very very high risk about this trade. Okay, so so you you you, you if you are you are trading for the last one, this leverage inverse ETF, they do have a lot of this leverage inverse ETF in the market as well. Uh, if you are if you want to trade this product, you you will you will have to really just drop down your investment uh, decision. Okay, put on your 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 strict cut loss point and all this stuff. And then when it hits it, you're gonna have a hard rule to just cut it off or stuff like that. Okay. Or leverage inverse ETF, and the time frame is gotta be very very small as well. Okay, because you are trading it uh, at a very high risk uh, uh, profile. Okay. Okay, we come almost to the last section of this uh, uh, today's sections. Okay, so it's basically the things to take note uh, while trading on this leverage and inverse ETF. Okay, uh, the first thing first will be the leverage multiples. Okay, because um, that this this is for the leverage ETF. Uh, the first thing first you gotta understand about the, the leverage. How many times? How many multiples they are taking? You know, is it two times? Is it three times? Is it five times? It can be crazy that way. So 
if you are trading on high multiples, that means you are taking higher risk, okay, compared to the uh, others kind of product. Okay, so uh, if you are trading high leverage, then you should really have to uh, draw down uh, a very good risk management, perhaps like only allocate, let's say you want to go in for 10%, only allocate like 2.5% at a time. So that is what we call like a risk management, okay, to, to, to at least draw down your, 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 your investment uh, uh, decision, okay? And then the second thing about this uh, leverage and inverse ETF, uh, the second thing to take note is uh, about this long-term holding risk, okay? Uh, this is also an interesting thing, okay? Uh, meaning to say, as I, as I mentioned just now at the beginning of time, uh, leave, uh, ETF is, is a, is a long-term product, okay? Uh, like Warren Buffett said, you know, you, if you just, the best thing to do is just put up 90% of the uh, investment into ETF, uh, just go and check on S&P 500. Uh, but for these two products, leverage and inverse ETF, you got to be very particular on it because they have this long-term holding risk, okay? Meaning to say, um, in, in, in the long run, it doesn't mean that the ETF will goes up uh, like forever, okay? Like for example, like an S&P 500, it goes up forever if you take up a long period of time, 40 years or 10, 30 years, something like that, okay? For, for leverage and inverse ETF, it is structured in a way only for short-term trading, okay? Only for short-term trading. Why? Because, as I mentioned, the biggest condition that you should trade on leverage on all this inverse ETF is that you gotta have high volatility periods. Okay, you gotta have high volatility periods. Then only your leverage or inverse ETF will work. But if these periods, we always say that the markets, if you really draw out um, like a big, a, 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 a long time frame, uh, 10 years, 20 years, you know, um, then you will see the, the volatility won't be that high anymore. Okay, so typically saying, Leverage or inverse ETF. Um, if you are if, if you don't have really that much of volatility, then at the end of the day, you won't get anything benefit from these two products. Okay, so bear in mind. Okay, bear in mind, leverage and inverse ETF is only meant for short term trading. Okay, it's only for short term trading. Never ever ever hold it for a long term period like for example a year you know something like that especially inverse ETF okay especially inverse ETF okay because uh, inverse ETF I as, as you know if you really draw out the market 30 years time it is goes up all the way okay market will be always going up because of inflation you know things like that the pricing should always go up okay that is how the market works. So that means if you hold inverse ETF for the long term, you will definitely only losing because uh, that is that is bad. You know, uh, you you always just suffer on the upside. Okay, on on the price going up, you only just suffer on the price going up. Okay, so bear in mind, no long term holding or leverage in inverse ETF. For normal ETF, okay. For normal ETF, literally like normal KLCI ETF. S&P 500 inter ETF, all this normal ETF, okay, you can just hold it for long term. Like right now, the price is still at the low side, go and buy, no problem, hold it for long term. 10 years time, you're able to see at the very least, the return can be at least like 7% or like 8%. And, and to be honest, 7 to 8% is a very good returns over the long term periods because it is consistent and it's um, much more, um, I would say, easy to manage uh, this investment. Okay. And then the last thing, okay, this is also quite important. Okay, meaning to say uh, this leverage or inverse ETF, okay, it's very important for you to understand about the expense ratio, expense ratio. Okay, this expense ratio is what we meant like your uh, expenses, you know, uh, like management fee. Or maybe like uh, uh, any um, you know platform fee or stuff like that. Um, 
if, if, if you look at a different kind of an ETF, they will have different, they will have different expense ratio. Okay. Uh, it's just because the way that they uh, manage it differently. Okay. So uh, perhaps some of this uh, uh, platform, they are giving a higher expense ratio because uh, some of these ETF, they can be very special ETF. Like uh, for example, let's say I come up with a crypto ETF. Okay. I, I track on the index uh, for crypto. Let's say in the future, we have this uh, in uh, crypto index. Okay. So I can just put up like a crypto ETF. Okay. And from there, you know, I can just uh, say that I, I, will, I will charge a higher expense ratio because this product it's 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 a special product. It doesn't have any, uh, it doesn't have many products like this in the markets. So uh, I will definitely charge a higher expense ratio for that. And then um, if you look at like um, for example some of this commodity ETF, okay, it can be a higher in expense ratio as well, okay, because uh, commodity uh, the pricing can be very very volatile. Okay, it, it can be even volatile than the stock markets. Okay, so that is why um, this kind of commodity ETF will be uh, having higher expense ratio. Okay, and uh, definitely at the end of the day, for leverage and inverse ETF, uh, as you can, as I explained, you know, the mechanism of them is quite complex as well because you know they are trading at the short term. You know they have uh, risks and all those things, and they give you leverage. They they give you a different direction of the performance and all this stuff. So, you know, it's a special kind of a product. So definitely their yeah, expense ratio will definitely be higher. Okay, the expense ratio will definitely be higher uh, compared to other kinds of uh, product. Okay, but, but I would say for, for ETF, honestly speaking, uh, their expense ratio wouldn't be higher than the mutual fund. Okay most of the time uh, because as I mentioned, like ETF is literally for passive investing. So, you know, their job is basically just tracking on the index. So, you know, they don't have to do like ma actively manage and all this stuff. They, 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 they don't have to do a lot of uh, difficult stuff. So for their expenses, their maintenance, you know, it's not that really, really that high. Lah. Okay, so uh, for that, you know, I would say like, if you compare other kinds of products, uh, ETF is still having uh, quite a lower expense ratio across the SS classes. Okay, so that is why, as Warren Buffett said it, like he likes ETF a lot. Uh, the main part of it is also because of this expense ratio is low. Okay, so you are giving up a very small portion of your returns, and you are able to enjoy a big chunk of the benefits uh, they provided. Okay. Okay, so that is the end of my section about this uh, leverage and inverse ETF. Okay, so now we will go into Q&A section. I'll pass the floor, this floor to uh, Shane. All right, All right thank, thank you Shane. so much, Debo. All right. If you have any questions to ask our speaker today, you may write them in the Q&A box and we will attempt to address as many as them as possible. All right. So, yeah, I see the first question. Is, is it true that to buy ETF that, is, uh, that has a stock code uh, METF US 50, we must buy it in the US dollars? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> this is, uh, I believe this is this uh, Dow Jones uh, ETF. Okay, this is the Dow Jones ETF. Uh, honestly speaking, um, because you are buying um, 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 I would say it's like it's like it's like it's like a it's like a different kind of products, okay. So, but it's offered in uh Busa Malaysia's. Uh, only speaking, I'm I'm not really that familiar in Malaysia's uh, ETF. Uh, most of the time, I just trade on in uh, uh, a different platform, and I'll just buy on their their ETF. Uh, that way it will be much more easier, okay. Uh, but um, to be honest. I would say I would, I would say I'm not I'm not really sure about this answer I would say because I can't really answer about this um uh to be to be frank I'm I'm not really uh, familiar about this uh Bosa Malaysia's uh in that uh, ETF okay so I can't really uh, answer you whether it's really have to be USD or MYR uh but uh as I as I as I see here it's much more like it's a USD um um um, um denominated so I believe it's it should be trading in uh, US like instead of you know, like putting up 
Malaysia.com, Malaysia Green Gain, something like that. Okay. Okay, the next question is, does ETF uh, give out dividends? Okay, this is uh, quite a common uh, question, uh, questions, okay? Uh, like, e does, does ETFs really give out um, this uh, 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 dividends, okay? Uh, I would say uh, they, they do give dividends, to be honest. They, they do give dividends, okay? Uh, they, will, they will pass on this uh, dividends to their investors, okay? Uh, but honestly speaking, uh, it, will, it, will, it, will, it, will, it will be most of the time, most of the time, not most of the time, the, the, the ETF, uh, the, this kind of dividends, it will be um, uh, pricing, okay? A lot of times pricing with the price itself, okay? Pricing performance itself, okay? So um, that way it gives you the dividend. Uh, but there, there are a lot of different kind of uh, ETF that actually uh, you can choose on, let's say like uh, dividend paying or all this stuff. So uh, they can give a different kind of a mechanism. Uh, like some of them, uh, I, I do come across like, some of this ETF that actually give you uh, payment in kind, uh, meaning to say instead of giving you like literally cash dividend something like that, uh, they actually give you like uh, addi additional uh, ETF uh, on that particular uh, ETF that you buy. Okay, so so you are you are you are, you are, you are, you are, you are gaining anyway, you know, gaining more exposure into ETF, and then and uh, yeah, that, that 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 is that is the um uh, the so called dividends that they uh, pays, you know, yeah. Mm, okay, but not all ETF uh, declare dividend. For example, if the ETF mm. is based on gold, uh, then of course there's yes. no dividend. Uh, so yes. still depends on the underlying constituent stocks. Yes, exactly. All right. So TJ would like to ask the next question. He remarked that, you know, one of the Unitrust agents once told me that ETF needs about 10 years to realize the return. Whereas Unitrust is shorter term and are more flexible to switch. Is this true? Mm. <laughs> okay, I think this question they have uh that the, the, there is a two question there are two questions in this uh, particular statements. Uh, the first thing first meaning to say, uh, is it really that long to realize the returns? Okay, and then the second question is that whether uh ETF or unit trust is the better uh, investment vehicle to you know switch or anything like that. Uh, but I would say. It really depends on what kind of investment style you want. Okay, uh, if if you are looking for literally passive investing, okay, what we talk about is that passive investing. Okay, meaning to say you just like 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 I have a lot of friends or clients. They are in a different background. Okay, instead of finance background, they are literally in a different background. Like for example, F and B business or or different kind of a businesses they do. Um, so most of the time they will tell me about this thing. It's like they don't have the time um, to, to look at the market, to monitor the market and to, you know, to just sit down and look at the news and understand about a lot of the things and, you know, how the world works in this finance uh, industry. Uh, so for, for them, it's, it's, it's the best thing for them to do is just, you know, put it into ETF because uh, they are, they are, the best way for them to invest is just passively invest because, uh, first thing first, they don't have the resources. You know, they don't. Uh, my my resources mean to say like the 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 idea. You know, the 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 the, the knowledge, the expertise to invest. Uh, the second thing is they don't even have the time as well. Okay, so they don't even have the time to learn as well. So might as well they just put it into passive investing. So the best thing I would say it's literally ETF. Okay, but as I mentioned uh, during the slide as well, like ETF for example, you're buying as an S and P five hundred ETF. Uh, you are getting the exposure in US markets. Uh, perhaps, let's say, for example, you are in this uh, uh, um, um, technology industry. And somehow you know that the technology is actually coming to boom okay, for the next half year or one year time. So from there, I would say you can go into unit trust okay, to get some of this good fund manager that actually expert in investing into technology. Then that is like a small portion of your portfolio into active investing okay so that is how i always recommend to my friends and my clients most of the time uh, i would tell them like literally you can just put it this way so it's easy for you to manage as well you just know that for a big chunk of it it's just passive investing you follow up the markets the market gives you like seven percent then it's great if the market is even higher like let's say 2021 uh in in, in, in uh, u.s market it goes up a like crazy high so that is even better so you know this is what we call like passive investing and, and then the small chunk of it you spend into unit trust or active investing. 
uh, and then that is like explained on your on your um, flexibility types. And for the unit trust claiming that uh, ETF takes like ten years to realize the 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 the, the, the return, I would say it's not like really like long time to realize return. I would say it's much more like um because you are following the markets, so you don't really have to pay attention to much of the things like and and. It's not really saying like you know you have to you have to wait for ten years then only you can see like thirty percent return. No, no, you, you, it's not like that. For example, you go back to like looking at seventy five hundred for the for the last ten years, you did only like I think perhaps more than hundred percent. So why not? You know. Yeah. So to say that it takes ten years for ETF to realize the return, then it means that the market, the market is really. That mm. bad, you know. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's really go flat for ten years, only you can see a bit of return. So yes. it, ETF is essentially tracking the market. Okay, it tracks the index. Yeah, mm. exactly. All right. So the next question is, you now what is the platform for us to buy and sell ETF? Uh? Okay. Uh, I personally, I personally, I use this platform called eToro, uh, Okay. Uh, because back then it was easy for me to just open up the account and then just track on it. Uh, I mean, just use on the products. Uh, but the thing is, I'll say, um, Etor is you, you gotta be careful about this uh, platform as well because uh, this platform it's uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's not really recognized in Malaysia. Okay, um, 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 in terms of this uh, what we call like uh, uh, our SC, you know, uh, they don't really look at it. I remember if I'm not mistaken, uh, okay, but. Uh, most of the time I use eToro just for the ETF things. Okay, just for ETF. And 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 you gotta be very careful as well because uh, if you trade a lot in ETO, you're actually losing because uh, a lot of times, uh, although they say that they charge a zero uh, brokerage fee and all this stuff, but uh, to be honest, they're actually charging you on the spread. So um that could be bad as well because um your investment uh, is actually charging at a higher uh, fee uh, compared to the normal one. Uh but the reason for me to just use eToro because it's very easy to open up the account and you know I just put up small capital into it just whenever there's a big volatility coming I'll just trade on it and that's it yeah okay just want to highlight that uh, uh, the broker that Depot mentioned is not licensed on yeah. by SC so for you if you want to buy and sell local ETF you can go through the local brokers lah. it is yeah. safer Exactly. Okay, exactly. so it's just like how you buy ETF is like how you buy and sell shares. You know, they are all listed on the exchange on Bursa Malaysia. How you buy shares is how you buy ETF. Uh, what is yes. the fee? Then, of course, you check with your brokers. Okay, yes. uh, how much it costs to for you to buy and sell ETF? Yes, exactly. All right, uh, usually it's just a similar fee. Lah. Mm. Next is how do we trade, leverage, and inverse ETF? Is it like scalping? So, this question is by Ilman. Is it like scalping? Mm, it's actually not not really sure about how's what what's the question asking about. Yeah, scalping means like you know, uh, like every day see the chart, you know, and buy and sell ETF. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, yeah, you can you can consider you can consider that that way. Okay, but uh, it's 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 not really like look at the price or the chart. Uh, most of the time, for me myself, I I I I I, I analyze on the on the, on the, on the news, news flow. Like for example, I can see there's a big um um, um decision coming. Uh, like uh, uh back then back then in in, in January time, I, I I was I was looking at the market and uh, you know I, I see that the U.S. market is gonna increase interest rate quite crazy, and I I can see that the interest is going to uncontrolled uh, for quite. Sometimes so that that is the moment that I buy. Uh, but then I, I sell quite quick as well because uh the reason for it is like I just set the rules for me uh to not holding it for long term periods. Okay, uh I I'm, I'm very particular on this um this what we call like um uh time frame. Okay, uh so typically saying I I'm, I'm not allowing myself to 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 holding it uh, uh for like you know. A, a, a month time or something like that. So most of the time, I just look at the news base. I can, if I can see that somehow the market is quite, you know, taking it, coming down for the for the for the for the information, then I'll just sell it off. TP. Uh, I, I I do not care much about like I want to sell at the highest point of the price or and things like that. I just want to hedge on, uh, get off some of this uh, return to offset the portfolio. So uh, I'll say that that is that is the way uh, that we trade on trade on top of the ETF. 
Okay, yeah, just do remember that the uh, leverage and inverse ETF are meant to serve the short-term trading purpose. So if there's anything that is more than one day, the return may not be exactly the same like the, yes. the, the claim. Huh? Yes. So it is on a daily uh, exposure basis. Yes, okay. Exactly. And the fund rebalance itself on an everyday basis. Exactly. The, uh, the next question is, um, are there any ETF that can help us to create weekly passive income? Weekly passive income. <laughs> Uh, well, to be honest, you can just put it into S&P 500. That is like literally the best ETFs ever, you know, um, in this uh, ETF world. Um, because uh, to be honest, as you can see, like literally the, mar the markets, uh, especially for US markets, uh, they, they, are the, they are the world economy because they, they have this biggest financial industry in, in the whole world. Okay, so that is why like literally their, their markets are literally the, the best one and everyone's Eyes was always stick to their, uh, you know, uh, news for and everything. So literally, I would say if you talk about like, I would say like weekly passive incomes, uh, the best one is just to invest into S&P 500. Would be the easiest one, and it's much more stable compared to that. Uh, rather than you know uh, all this uh, other kind of uh, ETF. Uh, but definitely you can also search about uh, dividend paying ETF as I mentioned. Okay, because as I said. There are a lot of different indexes in the world. Okay, uh, our 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 you know this uh, world institution MSCI. They always come up with a lot of different kind of uh, indexes. So you can search for dividend paying indexes. So when you say that they track on the the the, the company that actually pay dividend consistently. So from then you're able to get you know like passive income ETF. You know just just to give you a lot of uh, you know passive income something like that. Okay, the next question is, are there any ETF that can give us foreign market exposure? Yes, 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 definitely, definitely. Like even in Malaysia's uh, ETF, as I showed in the, in the slide, you know, you can, you can go on to get uh, uh, China's ETF, you know, China indexes, Hang Seng, uh, even like uh, US, you know, uh, different kind of exposure. Definitely you have uh, foreign exposures. Uh, so, you know, that's, that is why um, instead of just investing in Malaysia's, uh, you can always go into this kind of a uh, foreign uh, markets, you know, and uh, allow you to get uh, this foreign exposure at a, I would say quite a low uh, expense expense ratio, to be honest, because uh, ETF they, they won't be having high expense ratio most of the time. Yeah. Mm, okay, thank you so much, Depo. So the next question is: Are L and I ETF investable for all investors? Okay, yes, definitely it is uh, investable for all investors. Okay, I would say like literally all investors. Okay, um, like even your retail or even you have small capital, you can do so. You know, there are a lot of uh, different kind of ETF. Uh, so it's a very, very good product and it's a very innovative product as well uh, uh, for you to just search on ETF. Uh, the easiest way uh, to just go on for this uh, ETF uh, is just go to your just go to a brokers. Just go to a brokers. It will be the best way, the easiest way. And then just go on to the platform, you know, your CDS account. Uh, and then they have all kinds of ETF. They will definitely have all kinds of ETF. And then you can slowly, you know, um, uh, explore about this um, ETF. And just try to understand about their workings as well. Try to understand about their, how, how they work. Is it leverage? Is it inverse? And all this stuff. They'll have a lot of products in there. So yeah, definitely it's investable for all investors. Okay, um, what is the time horizon to trade the leverage and inverse ETF? Okay, um, time horizon wise, uh, if we talk about like leverage and inverse ETF, right? Uh, as I mentioned, I think um, I'm, I'm not holding for like more than a month time. Okay, that that is typically my uh, investment experience because uh, most of the time I can see uh, when a market is experiencing. Uh, big volatility, okay. Uh, it's always you know lasts about like a month time and something like that. Then it will consolidate uh, for for some time. Then perhaps if let's say the 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 the, the idea of it, the news of it, you know the 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 the, the perspective of it is still bearish, still bad or still good, then it goes up goes down. So it continues to trend something like that. Uh, 
but uh for my for my kind of an investment period is uh it's like literally one month time uh, but it's really depends on the scenario like uh what kind of a market volatility you are looking at you know um, and what kind of a direction you are looking at um uh, like for example if we are talking about let's say uh huge volatility like back then in 2020 you know uh, back then 2018 was quite crazy you know being to say um the whole world lockdown things and you know it goes up very very fast okay and and um the next second you know it rebounds back very very quick as well and, and somehow it goes up higher than pre pandemic prices so you know that is why like um even the market is moving that fast you know um you know uh, for that kind of a period of time uh, if you are buying on leverage ETF, you know that other things will, uh, you know, definitely rebound on on a lot of prices. Then, uh, and it's a huge um, volatility and very very strong direction view. So then you can have, you you are able to hold longer periods. Okay, you are able to hold longer periods. Uh, my my own as my own mistake is that uh, for this bearish movement from January until now, right, is that. I only hold for a very short period because that is my discipline time. Uh, so like I, I only hold for like one month time and, and, and I'm sure we are just cut it off. Yeah. So that, that is like literally my own uh, view. So I, I, I take out some losses, but you know, at least I got some things to offset right, my portfolio. So so I would say it's really depends on the scenario. It depends on how you look at the markets. Yeah. Okay, the next question is how can we utilize LNI ETF in our portfolio? Okay, the best way to utilize leverage or inverse ETF is to uh for example, my best one, I always I always most of the time I will use inverse ETF, okay, rather than leverage ETF. Uh whenever there's bad, bad you know, news or you know, bad timing um coming up, and then I'll just go into inverse ETF. And uh, at the very least, you know, try to like get a little bit of the returns there, you know, and then and then able to lend me a lot to um um, um like offset some of the like, returns uh, as as we call like hedge the markets, okay, hedge the markets. Uh, so so it's it's that that is like literally a good product, and for me, I would say it's like the best thing for you to do so like um inverse ETF. The, bad, the, the time is coming back, just use some of your small capital. There, there, there should be always a, a percentage of the allocation being cashed in your portfolio most of the time. And then you should use this capital wisely you know, to do such things, uh, to inverse hedge it uh, for, your, for your portfolio. Okay. Uh, that is one of the way, you know, the best one, I would say. Uh, for leverage ETF, um, it will be like, if you're really, really bullish about the markets, like recently, you know, you can see the market is very, very strong. Uh, they're having a strong view there. Uh, you want to trade on it? Yeah, you, should, you can trade on it. But um, I would say you have to really depends on the portfolio. Like if your portfolio, most of your portfolio is really in the long position, like you buy a lot of stocks that is at a, at a, at a, at a uh, high price or something like that. If you really trade on leverage ETF, then you should be careful. Because what if like the market reverses itself, then, you know, it would be a bad thing as well. So for myself, I will try to leave it, leave it. Uh, I will try to leave it myself trading on leverage ETF. Uh, most of the time, I will just trade on inverse ETF. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So in uh, Bursa Malaysia, we have a uh, leverage ETF up to two times, hmm. and we have an inverse ETF that's negative one times. All right. Yep. I think the key message here is that if you are, uh, doing passive investing, that you can consider, uh, you know. ETF exchange rate funds and if you want to use it for tactical reason like short-term speculative profits then you will use leverage ETF if you're bullish about the market and you use the inverse ETF if you're bearish about the market so it is more on tactical reason and for to, to for you to get uh, your trading gains yep. so uh, remember don't hold it for too long Okay, yeah. because if you hold it for too long, there's a mathematically compound effect that will uh go against uh go against you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so don't hold it for too long. All right. I, I think for, for me, um the longest I have held is about two months and then it dep uh you know it, it go down quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest that if you do leverage and inverse ETF, you know, don't don't do anything more than two to three weeks. Lah. 
yeah. the whole yeah. <laughs> Most of the time, it's just based on like news based, like you know, they, when you somehow look at the markets, you react pretty fast and all this mm-hmm. stuff. There, there is there's, there's like a a small opportunities there for you to like use until the trend a bit, uh, so you can just go on the trade. Uh, leverage or university but as i said you know this is like a more like a high risk product uh, so you gotta have your um, um trading plan lays out you know uh clearly as in like if the price goes down like let's say how many lo- how many losses you're taking let's say you're only taking for like five percent of losses let's say it goes up to five percent you should cut chain win so uh, this is most of my time i uh, do so uh, uh, uh for for this kind of thing uh, it's 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 a very good trade off as well because like for example five percent of the losses you can bear and let's say it can go up like um at least five to ten percent that actually helps you a lot with your you know portfolio uh, as as a whole you know uh, losses so that that is why like um inverse ETF is 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 I would say it's a it's a very good product it's a very very good product uh, for me I most of the time I just put up some capital in there and then just trade it whenever I want just like small facility there you know like for hedging purposes mm, yeah on bursa malaysia we have an inverse etf on klci hmm. so if you're bearish by klci you can you can uh, do that inverse etf on klci yep. um we also have leverage etf that give you exposure into the you know us market as well so if you are bullish about you know the us market then you can uh, you know uh, trade some of the locally listed locally listed uh, a uh, leverage ETF that can give you, you know, a uh, foreign market exposure without you having to leave the Malaysian shore and, you know, engage in the foreign exchange currency, you know, uh, change it to the uh, US dollar. So you enjoy the convenience of trading uh, locally listed foreign market uh, products, you know, uh, without having to uh, be, yeah, we're having to, you know, uh, have to pay for the you know huge spread between the bid and us offered by your commercial banks. All right, so these are some of the benefits. Huh? All right, so it looks like there are no more questions on my screen right now. So let me just take over. Right. All right, thank you so much, Debo Chua, for sharing with us you know, the alternate tools to trade in both the bull and the bear market. Thank you so much, Debo. No problem, Shane. Thanks for having me. All right, so for those of you who haven't checked out the uh, Bursa Academy, so this is a comprehensive one-stop e-learning platform that aims to provide you with a continuous and holistic learning journey. They simplify, user-friendly, and accessible anywhere, anytime, at your own pace. So uh, you can visit bursaacademy.bursamarketplace.com to uh, access this one-stop e-learning platform. They are investing articles, investing videos, investing recordings, investing coursework, investing quizzes for you all to do so that you can improve your knowledge in the equity market, Islamic capital market, the futures market, and understand the products, financial products a bit more uh, that, that we have available on Bursa Malaysia. So for our next webinar, it's happening on this uh, Friday that is titled Key Criteria to Dispose of Stocks in Our Portfolio. Now, when it comes to buying stocks, it is a very scientific process. It's a science, right? When we follow a certain criteria and we decide to make an entry to buy the stocks. But when it comes to selling stocks, it's more like an art, okay? There are a lot of emotions involved that, especially when it comes to selling the stocks, okay? We could be very, uh, you know, emotional. After we sell the stocks, if we see that, you know, the stock price still go up, Say, oh, yeah, should I hold it a bit better, right? A bit longer, right? So in this case, right, you know, we are going to study what are the criteria that we should uh, consider before we uh, sell stocks in our portfolio. All right, so it's happening on this Friday, 5th of August, 8.30 to 10 o'clock. I've just given you the registration link. Uh, you may go ahead and register uh, if you want to uh, understand, you know, what are the criteria to consider before you sell the stocks. All right, it's happening this Friday, 8 to 10. So with that, I want to thank uh, Debo Chua from uh, Bube Bursa for sharing with us, you know, the alternative tools to trade in both, uh, both the bull and the bear market. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us in this session. Hope you have a great rest of the day. Bye, everyone. See you on Friday.